Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's great to be here. Great to be part of the uh, Goeltry campaign um, in Kerala, right? Uh, I would like to specific, especially thank Energy Management Center of Kerala, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, um, for inviting us here, giving us an opportunity to interact with the government bodies in Kerala, interact with all you enthusiasts who joined us, viewers. Uh, as Anup said, I'm Siddharth. I look after sales for Ether. I'm also joined by my colleague Andrut, who uh, Head sales for Cochin, the Cochin Territory, right? Um, let me just set up the presentation and I uh, just let me know if it's visible. Yes, yes. sir, it's visible now. Sir. Visible? Yes, sir, yes. Yes, hi. So um, today I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, the, the EV revolution that's underway in the two-wheeler industry. Um, across India, and what is the part we Aether Energy are playing in that, right? So um, I'll spend about I'll what thirty to forty minutes on the presentation, right? Post which um, I'll be there to take some questions and you know under the knee be there to help to answer some queries that uh, any of you might have. I hope that sounds good, right? So um, so let me begin then. So to start with. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the EV, the two-wheeler industry itself. Let's give you an idea of what the two-wheeler industry in India looks like uh, and what we see it uh, looking like in the next few years, right? So um, India is one of the largest, is the largest two-wheeler industry in the world, right? We sell about 16, and in the last one, last year we sold 16.7 million. That is 161 lakh two-wheelers a year, right? In fact, about two years back, pre-COVID, uh, we were doing about 180 lakh two wheelers a year, right? Um, that's how big the industry is, right? Um, COVID has obviously dampened this in the last year and this year with, you know, not too many people going out, right? But um, we see this, the FI21, that is end of March 2021, right? The industry ended about 143 lakhs uh, sold. And we see over the next five years, the industry going back to, uh, 200 lakhs, just give me a minute. Industry going back to 20.9 million by FI26, which is basically 209 uh, lakhs two wheelers sold in India, which is a really, really large number, right? We are number one in the market uh, in the world, right? We and China are always contenders for the largest two wheeler um, industries in the world. Since 2017, India has been the largest two wheeler industry in the world, right? If I go one step deeper on this, um, yeah. So let's look at the split between scooters and bikes, right? Scooters today have about 33% of the market uh, share. That is out of all the two-wheelers sold, scooters are take 33% of uh, two-wheelers sold, right? And about five years back, scooters were only about 25% of all the two-wheelers sold. Today, they're 33% of all the two-wheelers sold. And we see this growing. Over time, by FY26, we see 43% of the market uh, of the two-wheeler market dominated by scooters. That is out of every 100 scooters that are, 100 two-wheelers that are sold, 43 will be scooters, right? And this is a trend that has been growing over past. So over the next, uh, what do you say? Next few years, we see scooter being more and more dominant. Till now, the uh, compound annual growth uh, for the last five years, scooters have been growing 14.4% while bikes have been growing 3.5%. Now the major reason behind this is as uh, roads improve as literacy improves, as women, women, women empowerment improves, more and more people are out there to buy scooters, right? And uh, as it is, we've seen metros, metros are already have about 50% um, vehicles, two wheelers that are sold are scooters already, right? So, um, in fact, in Kerala, if you see, Kerala sells about, uh, in Kerala, there are about 7 lakh two wheelers sold in a year. That is pre COVID, about two years back. Last year, about there are about 5 lakh. Um, two wheelers sold in the Kerala, in Kerala, right? In the last one year. Um, in Kerala, 65% of two wheelers sold are already scooters, right? It's because the roads are very good. You can actually, so the smaller wheels are, uh, are okay on these roads, right? There are a lot of people in the family using the two wheelers. You, your, uh, the, the father uses, the mother uses, the children use the scooter, the students use scooters, right? So the scooter is a vehicle that many people in the family can use it, right? So scooters already sell 65% uh, in Kerala, right? And 
we see that being more and more dominant. So while all India will move toward 43% of two wheelers sold with scooters, in Kerala, we definitely see that at a higher number. Right? So this is just the two wheeler industry right now. And this is the IC two wheeler industry. That is the not the EVs, the current combustion engines uh, two wheeler market, right? Yeah, moving on. So even in EVs, we see scooters are the ones that will lead the adoption of EVs in the automobile industry, right? Scooters have an inherent advantage for EVs because scooters are once vehicles that firstly they're growing faster than bikes, as I mentioned earlier. Um, scooters are the predominant vehicles that are being sold in uh, tier one cities and, and the main cities. And that's where the awareness level is also much higher, right, for EVs. Also two-wheelers, uh, in two-wheelers, Scooters are the ones used to much shorter distance. People like if I if I go to Kerala itself, in scooters are probably used within Cochin, within Calicut, within Trivandrum. Uh, people who commute between say uh, Cochin and Trishur probably use the bike a lot more, right? And the more you travel, uh, the more difficult it is to adopt to move to EVs right now because EVs have a limitation on how much you can travel in one charge, right? So while bikes and all the other industries uh, will follow, we believe that scooters are are the ones that will lead the adoption of EVs in the automobile industry. Even in cars, cars, I think there have been some really good products that have been coming into the industry in the last few years, but cars are still used to travel a lot more distances, right? The price difference between a petrol car and EV car is still significantly high. So it takes some more time for people to come on board for the market to shift towards EVs, right? Um, we definitely see one thing we know for sure, EV is in inevitable. EVs just make a lot more sense right? Uh, the industry is going to shift there. We believe that scooters are the ones that will lead the shift in the uh, change, right? Uh, additionally, if you look at recent times, a lot of other factors have helped uh, improve adoption of EVs, right? There's a lot more consumer awareness today of EVs, right? People knowing about EVs, people thinking EVs are a good option to go with. There's been a lot of government support, state government, central government, even this, even this initiative of book, uh, right? Go Green campaign, right? Uh, the Go Electric campaign have helped uh, people be more aware of EVs. People ask more questions about EVs and then, and hence try out more EVs, right? Uh, there's been a very strong push to localize components to into India. There are, uh, due to which the cost structures have improved and supply chain maturity has improved. And all these factors have helped the adoption of EVs, right? And with that happening, um, we see 35% of all scooters by FY26, that is the financial year 2025-26 being EVs, 15% will be bikes. Today about, there are about, uh, this year we'll probably end with about 2 lakh uh, two-wheelers, EV two-wheelers sold in the market, 2 lakhs versus 167 lakhs, sorry, uh, 143 lakhs, right, in the entire industry. Uh, so that, that's the potential by the way, 143 lakhs, and we are right now 2 lakhs. By FY26, we do see about 50 lakh two-wheelers being sold, being electric. So the question to ask is, why hasn't this happened yet? Everybody is aware of it. Everybody is aware of EVs right now. Everybody knows EVs are cheaper to run than petrols. In fact, to give you a hint of this, uh, like a per kilometer cost of an EV is about 25 paise and uh, a petrol two-wheeler is about 1.7, 1. 1.0. It will we'll soon be about two rupees per uh, kilometer with the new petrol, petrol prices, right? Um, but thing is, we believe that it's not on... Everybody knows EVs are better for the environment. Everybody knows EVs are cheaper to run, but that's not enough for people to move from petrol scooters to EV scooters. And we have to accept, we still have great petrol scooters in the industry. The products that are available today in the industry are really good. Uh, they're very easy to use. They're very reliable. They're very, uh, you, they have good utilities. You press a button, you twist the throttle and you're up going, right? Uh, it's not, not just enough, even though all of us do want to protect the environment uh, and obviously value you know a cheaper uh, running cost it's still not enough for to shift the balance towards evs right it's a new technology and this is why we believe that you need to have much better product offerings there need more product offerings out there for people to actually it uh, it has to be a really good product right um, and that's where Ether comes in. That's where we come in, right? That's what our aim has been to revolutionize the space, make, make a change, come in the product, which gives you a reason to move from uh, petrol to EVs. 
So I would now like to talk about the company and what we do and um, how we believe this will change the, the EV industry, right? So Aether Energy is a company that's been founded in 2013 by uh, two alumni of IIT Madras, uh, Tarun and Sapnil. Uh, we are predominantly a uh, R&D and product company. We have designed and developed the scooter in-house, right? Uh, and all the products in-house. Today we have a intelligent scooter and also a charging network which we have developed in-house. We are present in the markets, as you can see there, about 12 markets, we are already live. We'll be in live in 17 more markets in the next, uh, by the end of December, right? Um, as you can see in the patents portfolio, as, as I mentioned earlier, right, we are an R&D company. I think we, I can say we have one of the largest EV R&Ds today, R&D teams in the space. We have a very large team about, I would say 35% of our team is just R&D, right? And we focus on developing new products. Uh, we already have a platform developed now and we intend to develop more platforms. As of, so even though we started in 2013, we spent the last first five years just developing product. We came into the market in 2018. We started sales in 2018 in Bangalore and Chennai only. So over the last three years, we have had four products, four scooters. We have set up 130 charging points and we have set up nine experience centers um, across India, along with some of, some are owned by ourselves and some with our retail partners. And till date, um, Aether scooters have clocked 37.4 million kilometers across India. And I'll tell you about the importance of this uh, as, as we go in the slides, right? So uh, these are some of the principles that guide us. As I mentioned that this entire product has been designed from and built from scratch. When we said we will uh, revolutionize the EV industry, we did not start by saying, hey, let's look at the existing product. Uh, let's look at a petrol scooter. Let's remove the petrol tank. Let's remove the engine and just put a battery and motor in there, right? Um, a petrol scooter today is optimized for a battery, for an engine and a fuel tank, right? It's optimized for that. It's optimized keeping in mind those peripherals. And EV inherently brings a lot of other advantages. And if you want to really tap into the advantage, you have to design from scratch. You have to design for what makes sense for the consumer and not for what makes sense to build. Just because the supply chain already is uh, catered towards petrol doesn't mean you design for that supply chain, right? Design for what the consumer needs, right? So every component in this has been designed to meet the consumer needs, right? Uh, we have, and we not just started the product, we looked at the entire ownership experience and seen where all can we change it? What does, what makes sense for the new customers of today, right? And that's something I'll cover over the uh, course of the presentation. And finally, we, we want to change the image of electric vehicles in India. A lot of you, if you're familiar with electric vehicles, the image that scooters have had in electric vehicles are that, you know, they're slow. They have only, you know, top speed 25 kilometers per hour. They don't need licenses. Uh, they are used for uh, just, you know, in and around uses that their charge doesn't last, their batteries don't last. That's the image we have of uh, electric vehicles in India, right? That they're slow, they're not as good as petrol. And we want to change that. We want people to realize that electric is actually a much better technology and it is the future. And we believe it and I'm sure people will come on board. And I think that's happening right now, right? So with that, we have, uh, we have like I mentioned earlier, four products is what we had, uh, we have had till now. We first launched the Aether 450 and 340. We had that in the market for two years. Uh, last year, at around uh, by around November, we stopped the Aether 450. And last year, October, we had launched the Aether 40X and 40 Plus, which is what our current models are. And over the next few slides, I'll talk more about these two products and the technology that goes behind it. Yes, so, so the 40X, like I mentioned. Uh, the 40X, these are some of the specs of the 40X, and I'll go more in depth into it uh, over slides. Just to give you a, a basic understanding, we have a zero to 40 kilometer acceleration of 3.3 seconds. Uh, this scooter can hit a top speed of 80 kilometers per hour. That's a true speed. That's actual speed of 80 kilometers per hour. You're uh, right. It has a 4G connectivity. It has a true range of 85 kilometers and a certified range of 116. Certified range is the one the government, uh, the government certifies you and that's under standard test conditions. We believe that we should also tell you about the true range. We should talk more about true range. What is the range that you actually get on the road, right? And in the eco mode, you get 85 kilometers uh, true range. It has seven inch touch screen. Uh, it has Bluetooth connectivity uh, that both these, the 4G, 7 inch and Bluetooth together help you, uh, you know, have onboard navigation, have certain features like call assist. Um, we can do all their updates. 
and uh, it has parking assist, which is reverse, right? It, you can actually reverse the scooter, which which sounds very simple. And from when you're designing it, it's a very simple thing, but it really is so much value to a customer because if you use scooters and or two wheelers and you're parking, right, and you have to pull the scooter back and forth, if you want to go out of a parking point, it's just so helpful to have a, a reverse gear in it. So it's not even a gear, you just change the directional motor and we can we can actually go in reverse. And that's what you call the park assist. Uh, it has a gradability of 21 degrees, which is far more than any slope that you will actually find uh, in in the roads today. Even the steepest of parking lots, this scooter will be able to pull out of it, right? And all this is powered by our battery. The battery is the heart of an EV, right? Uh, whereas for, for a petrol engine, you can see the engine is the heart. In an EV, the battery is actually the heart of a, a Navy, right? It The battery decides how much range you can get, how much power you can pull out. The way you design your batteries, what decides, defines how much um, energy you can pull out, energy you can store, the rate at which you can pull out energy, right? Uh, and the rate at which is what defines how much power you can get out of it, right? How, how big a motor you can attach to it, right? And, um, and you need to control the battery as much as possible. So in Aether, we have designed, developed, and we manufactured the batteries. That's that actually the entire company started by designing the batteries. That's something that has been poured to us. We have spent a lot of time on that. Uh, and the Aether 50X has a battery which is IP67 rated. Uh, you would have seen this uh, in phones. You would have seen this categorization in phones. This basically means that we can uh, six shows talks about uh, the dust resistance and seven is for water water resistance. IP67 means this battery can be placed underwater for underwater at a depth of one meter for 30 minutes and no water will go in at all. And you need to do this when you're developing a scooter for markets in India, which has so many different weather conditions, right? right? Talking about Kerala itself, the amount of rain that Kerala goes through, you, you can't say that this battery is not waterproof. You can't say the battery is not water resistance. You can't say this battery will not do everything a petrol scooter does and more. Because if you can't say it, then people will not switch, right? It has to be made to look at all weather conditions. So the battery is IP67 rated. Um, it's it's, it's a 2.9 kilowatt hour battery. It, as I mentioned earlier, 116 kilometers is certified range and 85 kilometers two range. And all this range is again powered by how big a battery capacity is. One is the battery capacity itself, and second is how you use it, how you use the uh, power from it, how do you monitor it, um, how do you make sure that you, the battery doesn't overheat, how do you make sure it doesn't get drained too fast, right? And that's controlled by a battery management system, which we have developed in-house, right? So that's the battery. Um, now, beyond that itself, we realize, okay, now we got the battery, we, we have the battery that is there. Uh, where do you put it, right? Like I said earlier, you could, you could have said, we could have said that, let's take out the fuel tank and put a battery in there. But then realize one battery is, uh, the battery is the shape that it is. And we have a motor, uh, which is different from what an engine is in terms of uh, dimensions. And this, because these dimensions, this actually, we can actually fundamentally redesign the way a scooter itself uh, behaves the, the design of it right in any in any product in any automobile you ideally want the maximum weight at the bottom to lower the center of gravity right and we realize with this coming in we can actually place the battery in the bottom and the motor in the middle right and for people who ride two wheelers you'll always find a bike more comfortable than a scooter because in a bike the weight is all in the middle right it's much more easy to handle you can turn it around a lot more whereas in scooter the engine's in the back the fuel tank is in the back the weight is in the back which actually makes it a little more unstable than what a bike is, right? Um, I personally ride a lot more bikes and I, so I enjoy the bikes a lot more. And we realize we can do the same thing for our scooter. So the battery, which is the heaviest component, about uh, 18, 20 kilos at the bottom, the motor's in the middle. So you have 50-50 weight distribution, which makes it a lot more easier to drive, right? A lot more easier to ride, right? A lot more easier for anybody to ride. Like, and I'm talking even be it uh, men, women, elderly people, children, it just makes it a lot more stable to ride, right? Um, we looked at disc brakes front and back, right? And we said, when you're going electric, so first you don't have oil change, you don't have, uh, you don't have oil changes anymore, you don't have, uh, so you should not need, the motor does need to be serviced, the battery does need to be serviced. Let's make sure the entire product needs as little service as possible. So you don't need to come for oil changes, you don't need to come for, uh, say, battery checkups. Uh, in a, in a two-wheeler, you have to oil the chain. So you said, let's not do a chain. Let's put a belt in there, right? Uh, your chains are normally drums, 
drums need drum brakes need a lot more service we said let's move to disc brakes which again don't need service so it's not just about being clean by saying that we are environmental friendly be clean throughout be clean in terms of the uh, what is the other you know lubricants or other uh, raw materials that you use make it overall clean right and that's the concept that went behind the scooter and with all this we also get so much more utility right one is the handling and dynamics today we have uh, the underseat storage has no fuel tank we have the largest undersea storage that you can get in any two wheeler at 21 liters right and all this is what ev helps you achieve uh, you can do this because ev is just a simpler technology and you can actually redesign the vehicle itself and provide more utility right and this is going back to what i said in the beginning uh, design from scratch right that's what you've done here and we have our intent was to make a scooter that is better than the scooters out there and only if it's better is when you'll say hey this is better why don't i try it out right so purely from a performance uh, point of view we beat any scooter today in your 0 to 40 acceleration right um, we have a top speed 80 km per hour it is not slow in any uh, way you look at it 80 km is more than enough for all of, for most city users right um, it's lighter than most scooters it has disc brakes right so only if you give a product like this will people say hey why don't i try this out why not i I will say I don't mind the energy change. I don't mind the technology change because this is a predominantly a better scooter, right? So that is the thought we have, thought process behind us. And I think we have uh, with the four fifty X, we are very clear that if you're coming to the market, come on the uh, what do you say, the high performance area, right? And that is when people start exploring EVs. And once you establish there, then you give more products to the customers, consumers, and to the more uh, the larger and the mass market, right? And the great thing is even the government incentives, if you look at FAME, FAME 1 and FAME 2, the FAME 2 and the recent uh, additional incentives in FAME 2, right? The government has also been incentivizing higher performance. The bigger your battery, the more the incentive uh, you get, which, is, which has been great for us. And which means the industry is also aligned to the fact that people will shift only if you give a product as good as petrols or better. Otherwise, I mean, honestly, there's nothing, the cars and bikes today's performance wise, Utility-wise, they're quite good. They're actually, they're actually really good, right? We need to give a good reason to move on. So I think we can probably say that we are the quickest scooter in India. We are the fastest charging in India, right, on a two-wheeler. And uh, that's that's what we want to enter the market with. And I think EV has helped us get there. The EV technology is so much cleaner, so much more environmentally friendly, so much cheaper, and just better technology. That's what's helped us uh, get there, right? Um, so that's on the perform. That's on the utility side. That's on all the parameters that you already compare with on electric scooter or on a normal scooter. In normal scooter, you compare uh, specs, you compare uh, performance, acceleration, you compare size, you know, storage spaces, right? So on those fronts, we said, let's let's beat it wherever we can. And that's something achieved. Additionally, we thought uh, entire industry changing, consumer needs are changing. Today, a uh, mobile phone has been, uh, it's just part of your life, right? The features that you get, you're so used to, what a phone offers you, you take so much of it granted, you take a calendar for granted, you can take uh, access to music granted, you take access to information that you need granted with mobile phones. And it is high time that even automobiles get there, right? Uh, my favorite example is a, is a tachometer, right? Which shows the RPM of the engine. And that's something which we, we, we don't use, we hardly even use it. If you're showing uh, information out there, show information that makes sense to a consumer, right? Make it easy to use, make it seamless with the rest of your life. And hence, uh, we said, why do you put touchscreen? But people are already used to making touch, having a touchscreen. People are used to that sort of discipline. That's more comfortable with us right now. That's what we got used to, right? So one, we have a touchscreen. Beyond that, we have a 4G SIM card inside, right? Um, which, and the SIM card is connected to the cloud, right? So you get data sent back and forth from the cloud. Um, the simplest feature that uh, 4G enables is na onboard navigation, right? You go to a city uh, as, especially the, the the metro cities, right? With more and more places that are there to explore, uh, you, all of us, if you're in two-wheelers, it's a tiring thing to have a phone in your pocket. If you want to go somewhere, everyone else might stop, pull your phone out, okay, see where to go, pull your phone, put your phone back in, and then go. Instead, we said, why don't we just have maps on board? Why don't we have the maps right in front of you? And this has a Google Maps integration, right? Uh, so you put a destination, you send it to your mobile, onto your scooter, and the scooter dashboard will show you where to go. Um, that's the simplest feature that 4G enables. Uh, beyond that, with the Bluetooth capability that we have, 
you never need to take your phone off again, right? If you have your uh, ear sets plugged in or Bluetooth helmet in, if somebody's calling, you can see who's calling there and you can actually with the press of the button on the scooter, you can accept the call or reject the call right there, right? You don't again need to stop, um, stop and take your phone out and do this. Similarly for music, you can change tracks because it's something that people are doing uh, a lot right now. Instead of having to take your phone out, change tracks on the go. So uh, these are some of the features that 4G and Bluetooth, actually these two Bluetooth enable that navigation 4G enables that has been enabled with this connectivity. But um, the next one thing is you can all, you have, we have an app on your phone, right? Which shows you where your scooter is. It shows what is the charge of your scooter. So if you want to see, okay, tomorrow you're you're going out somewhere, right? Uh, uh, instead of going to your scooter to see how much charge is left, you can actually see it on your phone. It shows you, uh, you can actually call for support from the phone. So because we have a SIM card on the scooter itself, the scooter sends data to the cloud, cloud sends data to the phone, right? Uh, and that's something that kind of 4G has enabled. Now, over and about this, now another very important aspect that 4G enables is uh, OTAs, over the air up upgrades. Any two wheeler today, any, um, I would say, I see product out there today, a traditional automobile out there today, is the best on the first day you buy it, right? Beyond that, as you use a vehicle more and more, uh, wear and tear increases, your service requirement increases, um, it doesn't have a fresh feeling, right? Um, and it, it is always the best in the day one. With OTAs and with high connected scooter, we can actually make a scooter which only gets better over time, right? As you mentioned, um, we have done 30, 37, sorry, uh, yeah, 37 million kilometers have been ridden of scooters Ether scooters in India till now. That is 37.4 million kilometers worth of data. I get data from my scooter on, so we can collect data from the scooter on the speed of the scooter, how much it leans, how, how is the braking, how, is, how are people using it, consumer data. We have 37.4 million kilometers worth of data. And this data by analyzing, you can actually bring in more features and with 4G connectivity, you can update the scooter every once while features that weren't there in the first day. So, in fact, over the last three years, we have actually updated scooters with features which weren't there in the beginning. When we started, uh, when we launched the 450, we got a lot of feedback that people wanted a mode that, that could get them even more range. So about six months down after you got an update, we actually introduced a new mode. So today the scooter has three riding modes, uh, Eco, uh, Ride, and um, Sport. And if you buy the 450X, you get an additional mode called Walk. So there are four modes. And when we launched, we didn't even have the Eco, we launched the 450. It's after getting data, after getting consumer feedback, we actually launched that uh, mode with an other update, which means even all the scooters are already sold and on the road got the same feature, right? Um, then recently, the last the last uh, update that you've done is, we can now do theft and tow detection, right? That's a feature that we can, we can figure out when your scooter is being lifted or towed out or, uh, or stolen, right? That's an update which you launched. Because you're connected, you can actually, like how you have updates on your phone, you can send updates to your scooter. This is something that uh, that 4G has enabled. And again, being with EVs, it's just a lot more simpler to integrate this technology into the product. Because uh, the motors, the motor is just one, it's just two uh, rotating bodies, uh, about two to three rotating bodies. The battery is very simple. It's very simple to get data out of it and even uh, pass updates to it. And EVs just inherently allow you to uh, have such technology, integrate such technology much better with the product, right? So we, it's an ever improving scooter. That's something that we've worked on. And over time, uh, as you get more data, we can actually launch more and more features and all the scooters on the road get access to the feature, right? So uh, that's been on the product. So we've, we've tried uh, to make sure, you know, in this industry, come out the product that is superior. So more people will adopt EVs. Beyond the product, even the way we sell is something that we have uh, we redefined. I'll just quickly spend some time on this. Uh, if you go to uh, today, more and more people are comfortable with buying online. They're comfortable making decisions online. In fact, most of your decision making is done online by either uh, going to YouTube, reading blogs, reading articles, reading reviews, going to webinars. Right, that's what uh, helps you decide. And you also want we also want to get to a place where you can your more and more your purchase can happen online. Today you can book the scooter online. In fact, sixty percent of Scoot, uh, bookings actually come online 
and you only need to visit our stores to take a test drive. And even when you visit the stores, the stores, as you can see some pictures that we have, it has to be an experience center. You already go in there knowing a certain amount about the product, right? Uh, when you want to go to a store, you just want to have, get the answers for things that you don't know. You want to experience the entire product. You want to take a test ride and see what the scooter can do now, right? So uh, we have a store already operational in Kerala and Cochin right now. Uh, we'll have a couple more com coming, right? So even the sales experience, something that we want to redefine, right? Um, the way you experience the product. And that's what con consumers today need. They just want to go there, experience it. Everything else is available online, right? All the other deta uh, details. We should be able to, we want to get to a place where you can have the entire process, the purchase process online, right? And you just have to come to us to try the scooter and take delivery of the scooter, right? Uh, and last, but definitely not the least, uh, charging. We definitely have to talk about charging. Right? Charging is the one thing that's on everybody's mind when you come to EVs. Uh, so along with the scooter, we uh, we believe that we have to provide a charger, right? And we and the, even the charging experience has to be seamless. Like how the rest of the scooter is a seamless experience, even the charging has to be a seamless experience and you should not have to think about it. Today, a lot of people have concerns for EVs saying that, you know, oh, you know, I live in a flat or I live in a, a certain location. How do I set up a charging infrastructure? How do I set up a charging point, right? How do I draw it out? So we provide something called the Aether Dot as shown in the photo, right? Um, and we install it to every scooter. You get a choice to pick it up with the scooter. Uh, and we'll install it at your parking lot and pull out the connection from your distribution box. Wherever your distribution box, pull out the wiring and set it up where your parking lot is set it up on the wall. And the only thing that you need to do is pull it out and plug it in. That's it, right? It authenticates, it can charge only your scooter. Your charging point can, because of uh, the communication protocol that we have, is linked to your scooter only. So you cannot charge any other scooter with it, right? A full charge takes about five hours, uh, which means overnight you can leave for charging. And the great thing is you don't have to wait for the charge to go down, right? In today's, the EV technology itself has improved so much that you can charge it at any point. You can do home charging at any point. Even if the vehicle has 70% charge already, you can go home and plug it in. It's okay. Uh, it cuts off at 100%. You don't have to wait for it to go to 0% or wait for it to go 10%, which you do with phones, right? Um, come back home every night, just plug it in. In fact, 80 kilometers is more than enough to uh, last you for three, four days in most cities, right? Um, but even then we say charge it in every day, but even that has to be a seamless experience. For people who want, we also provide a portable charger, which is very similar to uh, a home, a laptop charger actually, which you can plug into any five amp plug points. And this is what most uh, industry is doing now. Um, that's the best part. So it is no longer uh, as much of a problem as we, perceived it to be long back, right? Uh, setting it up, we have actually set up a good number of points already, right? Uh, the, the private points. So every time you buy a scooter, we have a team that comes in and installs it for you, installs a charging point for you. Now, beyond this, there's also the public charging grid, right? The We all have the fear is, what if I run out of charge in the middle of nowhere? What if I'm outside my house and run out of charge, right? And this is where the Aether grid comes in. The Aether grid is our uh, public fast charging network. Right, which we set up charging points in certain parts of the city so that you can uh, go there, plug it in, and charge. Right, and at the public points, we have fast charging. Right, and the fast charging can charge at 1.5 kilometers in a minute, which means you go there, you charge for 10 minutes, you get 15 kilometers of range. Um, we believe in in the public points, it has to be fast charging because you don't want to go to a public point and spend five hours just waiting for your scooter to be charged. You want to go in, just get enough charge to go back home or go to your next destination. Right, and uh, even this is rated for IP55, which means for rain, what is waterproof? Right, uh, for light showers, it can be, it can withhold because these might be in public points. Right, um, it has cloud connectivity, so you can monitor which ones are live and not live, and you can also find on your app which public charging point is uh, active right now, which is available right now. Right, so the public charging points you can connect our scooter, but you can also there is a port there we can plug in any EV into the public charging point. Right. So we set this up in any city that you go to, right? To give uh, people comfort that, you know, in case you run out of charge, uh, you can still go in and get charged. But reality is that uh, even today, about 95% of charging happens at home. People don't, even though when you're buying a EV, you keep thinking that, oh, what if uh, I run out of charge? There isn't enough public charging in the, in the government. You know, the government hasn't set up enough public charging. That's what everybody throws out, right? But uh, reality is 
one, the private space is the one that has to take initiatives on this also. And the second reality is that you don't need public charging as much, especially when it comes to something like a scooter. You'll realize that you will get into a charging habit similar to what you get on your phone and just go back home, plug it in, and that charge is more than enough to last you for a city use. And hence, I'll come back to my first point, right? That why it is easier for scooters to move into EVs first, because scooter users inherently need much lesser, uh, have much lesser distance requirements, uh, travel requirements, and you'll end up finding that you can actually charge it at home and you don't need public charging as much, right, as you thought um, in this. That being said, it is still important to have it for emergency purposes, but uh, it gives you a lot of comfort, comfort, but home charging is what we finally believe for a B2C space, right, as personal commute space, most people end up charging at home itself. And even if you have to go to a public charging point, we make sure you set it up at places where you might go anyway. We set it up at cafes, we set it up at gyms, malls, where you let me go there to spend maybe about half an hour, right? Uh, spend some time there. Uh, and that's where we set up these public charge, charging points from the Aretha grid, basically, right? So uh, if I come, and this is my last few slides, come so to question, we already have, uh, we already have six public charging points set up and seven if you come to store, right? And uh, we have four more, five more public charging points coming up. The intent is that we believe that we should end up at a place where every six kilometers, you should have a place to charge your scooter, right? One every six kilometers. Um, and in Kerala, we are already active in um, Cochin right now. We'll be coming up in Calicut in the next uh, two months. And actually in the next month, we should start Calicut soon. Uh, sales in Calicut and Trivandrum over the next three months, right? So finally, I'll just leave you with a short uh, video and we can move to our Q&A session. Okay, thank you. That's thank. That is all the uh, deck. Uh, I hope I was able to give you all uh, idea of the industry and uh, our product and how we how we plan to play a part in this industry. Uh, thank you so much. We can uh, take some questions if you all have any. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Zanu. Sir, uh, just a query from one of the participants is like, uh, uh, how are we, how are you guys arranging the test drive and all in in state of Kerala? Like now, if even if you are uh, starting the new sales in Piruvanthapuram and Kolkot, how are you going to address the different other districts uh, in Kerala? So there are so many pro, uh, prospective customers you will be uh, available in other districts also. So how are you manage, will be managing that? Yeah, so uh, the intent is that uh, by this, by end of this calendar year, we should be in these three locations. Uh, that is uh, Trivandrum, Calicut, and Trivandrum, Cochin, and Calicut are where we have our experience centers and test drives have started, right? Uh, we want to first establish there. We want to first make sure that customers there get a good experience. We also uh, set up our charging base and everything there and establish. But over the next, so that's the first three locations that you want to go to. But uh, Kerala is a very uh, is a very interesting market, and Kerala is almost one big city, right? And it's important that we are present in multiple locations because the customer intent is the same type of customers everywhere. And so, I the next year is when you will see start seeing uh, branches and test drive points open across the state, right? Uh, in and around, starting with in and around Cochin, in and around Trivandrum, and uh, then moving on to Calicut. And so I think you'll start seeing us in the bigger place like Trishur, Kotiam, uh, Alapi, Alua, those locations we will start. So next year is when we see a much more, uh, what do you say, uh, much more expand, rapid expansion to the smaller uh, cities in Kerala, right? So today, if you want to take a test, right, you can um, 
you can actually get one in Cochin. You can also go to a website and put your location and book a test ride. And as and when we reach those locations, and if we have, say, in a smaller town, a good amount of interest for test ride or test ride bookings, we can look at maybe, you know, having a test ride uh, camp there at some point. But to start with, I think these are three locations that we're focusing on. And next year, starting uh, next year, early is when you start seeing us uh, come in more and more new cities. I, I hope that answered the question. Yes, sir. So thank you, sir. So the uh, one of the participants, Mr. Anit Krishnan, has asked a question. Uh, why did it's an actual a technical kind of question? Why did yeah. you either choose belt drive over chain drive? Okay, so uh, so I'll come back to the the clean bit, right? We we looked at the product and said let's try and uh, remove the need to uh, remove the need to service the scooter as much as possible, right? In a chain drive, you still uh, have to lubricate the chain every once in a while. There's maintenance required in a chain. In a belt drive, you don't need maintenance. It's just uh, during your once a year service, we just have to check the tension. That's it. But there's no need to lubricate it. Uh, there's no need to. It actually fair. It's actually very uh, good in terms of weather resistance. Uh, it makes. I would. I would say it makes a very different sound, right? But you. And more importantly, the power transmission is very efficient. A chain drive, so uh, so one is the maintenance cycle, second is the power transmission itself, right? Chain drive, uh, a belt drive is about, I, if I'm not, I don't have the exact number, but it's about 95% plus uh, transmission of power from the motor to the wheel. So you don't lose energy. It's so much more efficient than the chain. Chains tend to lose uh, some tension over time, and which means you lose power that has been transmitted through the uh, wheel. Yeah. Anirudh, is there anything else uh, you, you think I've missed, which you should add? See, I... I no, sir, that's uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, okay. I had uh, the ether experience, as you call it. I uh, rode the scooter a couple of months back at Cochin, and it's very good. But my concern was regarding you know, uh, the slippage of belt drives. So won't the belts slip, particularly since we have a lot of rain uh, during the rainy season and the oil can, uh, you know, come into contact with the belt uh, and the metal parts. So won't that be a problem when we ride the scooter on roads, particularly when it's wet? Actually, no. Uh, it's you. There are already, if you see certain bikes that are actually, uh, what do you say? That already go on belt drives uh, in the in the market. So slippage is not a uh, is something that you test for. It doesn't slip out of the uh, of the pulley, right? right? There is on one side there is actually a what do you say? There, if you see the design of the pulley itself, it doesn't allow for slippage, so it can't slip off. It is tested for actually as muck, rain, uh, Indian weather conditions. I'll say, right? Uh, so only thing that needs to be checked is tension that too, probably once a year when you check the belt tension of it, right? But there is no slippage, it's not an issue with belt. Okay, okay sir. Right. So another question is from Mr. Mohanan. Uh, he asked the price of the scooter that uh, the 450X and the warranty of the battery and all. He is asking for that. Yeah. Uh, so I'll start with the warranty first. The warranty of the battery is uh, three years and un unlimited kilometers. And uh, when we say warranty, we say that Warranty is uh, up to 70%. That is, even at the end of three years, you'll still have 70% of your battery life left. Um, so because in a, in a battery generally, it's uh, your degradation is firstly very, very slow from 100% uh, to 70%. And below 70% is not, the degradation is much faster. So at 70% and below, it's not the best for an automobile purpose. You want to change it. So the warranty that we have is three years. It covers three years unlimited kilometers, and we are saying in three years, even at the end of three years, it will still have 70% of its charge left. The moment it goes below 70, within three years, if it ever happens, we'll replace it. And reality is for the scooters that have already been on the road uh, for three years, uh, for the, the 40s have been on the road for about three years now. Um, over two years, we've seen only about 10% degradation of the battery right now. Right? That's about the range that we are, the, the figures that we're seeing right now, and we're starting that more. But yeah, three years and unlimited kilometers is the warranty. Uh, on the pricing in Kerala, um, in Kerala, the X, the X showroom of the 450X is uh, 1.6 lakhs and the 50 plus is uh, 1.4 lakhs X showroom price. Yeah. Sir, uh, so after getting that fame, uh, incentives and all, we'll be getting the in a uh, lower price, right? 
yeah so i think uh, so anurud can you just update the latest prices with the fame uh, subsidy yes sir sure so the on road price of the 450x uh, in kochi will be 161620 rupees and the on road price of the 450 plus will be 141597 yeah so so 1.6 so the showroom price of the uh, what do you say the 450x after the latest one is about 1.45 right and the ex showroom of the uh, 50 plus so 1.6 came down by 15000 rupees uh, and the 50 plus is about uh, 1.25 yeah okay sir uh, another uh, few questions sir uh, mr shashi has asked uh, can either scooter get charged from other public charging stations than either grid also either grid meant for charging e scooters other than either make likewise he is asking yeah okay so uh, can either so first i'll do the first one so the ether also comes with the uh, so firstly most public charging points right now are just are basically five amp sockets they plug points right they are not uh, only in ours you will find a specific outlet which matches ours right now the rest of most public char- charging points right now are five amp plug points and then they are made sure that they are made with the right amount of uh, security and you know precautions taken so we get what we say a portable charger right which you can buy with the scooter and that you can plug in anywhere so even in any other public charging station you can plug in your portable charger similarly at the either public charging locations any other user can plug in their charger into this right into our uh, public charging grid okay sir hope that so yeah. uh, so one miss mangala devi has asked a question uh, that like she is uh, uh, put a concern is regarding the suitability of electric scooters to indian road conditions with potholes i heard a remark from a user that it is not that comfortable when compared to other scooters like i think the regular scooters so she's uh, raising a concern yeah so this is this is exactly the uh, the concerns that we want to change right our, our perception of electric scooters for the longest time have been that they are uh, not built for the electric roads uh, not built for indian roads not built for indian conditions because they were mostly uh, much slow products they were kits that were brought in and assembled here they had motors in the wheel right uh, which we have to change you actually in if you saw if you saw the part of the designer scooter we actually had a, a weight in the bottom we have a mono suspension a mono shock in the center uh, similar to bikes um, and you if you're designing a scooter for india you can it has to be designed for indian roads it has to be designed for indian standard conditions and for us we joke saying indian standard conditions is two people plus one gas cylinder if it can't hold that then it's not good enough for india right so uh, first i my the best way to align this concern is to try out the scooter itself uh you should go try it out but we have designed this for indian roads uh, in fact it has to be able to manage our conditions our load capacities right and that's what you've done with the design the frame is designed such a way that it can take these loads the suspension is designed to be uh, it's in the center the weight balance is center so it's actually much easier to handle and can take on take on shocks a lot a uh, lot harder so to make it more comfortable right uh um, this is this is the theoretical explanation i think the best way to solve this is to try out the scooter itself but uh, and that's I, i think that's what you've done also to make sure that indian it matches indian conditions takes in conditions uh, sir there is one question from anwar uh, uh, is in malappuram district available that you already i think you have already uh, yeah i covered yeah, yeah yeah so uh, yeah, uh, sudha sir has, uh, anwar mr anwar sudha sir already told that uh, they will be opening the showroom in kodi code in two, within 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 a, within two months so you will be able to take the test ride from there so another question from mr uh, sambandham uh, what is the special protection from steel stealing of batteries so he is he is having a different concern like oh, uh, uh, theft of the batteries and all yeah so that is one concern. so our, ba- our batteries actually are integrate integral part of our entire structure and the frame it is not a battery you can just open the seat and pull a battery out to get to our battery you have to uh, first of all open up the scooter itself open up some panels open up uh, it is you can't just you can use a normal spanner and uh, you know or a screwdriver and open the a battery the terminals also are not it's not like a like a lead acid battery you can unscrew the terminals and pull the battery out right the terminals are very different it is on the floor it is under some panels it is bolted on onto the chassis uh so you can't just pull it out uh, like you imagine you can pull out in a petrol a lead acid 
battery in a, in a car. It's so, so that's what we've done to make sure you can't steal it. That's what we've done to make sure it's part of the structure itself. You, a normal person cannot un, unplug it. You can't even open the access area to unplug it, unplug the battery, right? Uh, and you can't use normal tools to even just pull the battery out. Uh, we need a special jig and fixture to open uh, pull the battery out of the scooter. So I think uh, theft is not currently yeah. a worry. Sir, I just uh, for last question, uh, Mr. Anwar has asked what type of batteries have been used in the... Oh, I, I'm sorry I didn't cover that. Uh, like explicitly call that out. Batteries that are used are lithium-ion batteries. Uh, lithium-ion based batteries are what you use. So lithium-ion cells are what we import and we assemble it. We assemble and design the way the lithium-ion cells are... Uh, kept in the battery. So it's a lithium ion battery, right? The lithium ion batteries inherently have a much larger life uh, than lead acid. A lithium ion can, uh, the battery can go up to 50,000, like a single cell can do over a thousand cycles. And if you say one cycle is 60 kilometers range at least, it lasts about 60,000 kilometers easily, right? Uh, it holds a lot more charge than a lead acid can use. So this is a lithium ion battery. Okay, so so one last question, sir. Mr. Shashi has asked in the current either grids that you are, uh, what is the tariff when uh, we when we charge from either grids? Likewise, you have asked a question. So today we are uh, so we have some we have a subscription pack which you take which will you can buy with the scooter which covers the charging usage uh, for on a monthly basis or an annual basis, right? But today. The Aether charging grid is free for all consumers, right? For all for consumers who buy our scooter and for people who go and charge on the Aether charging grid, as of now, it's free. We are not charging users for it. We will probably start charging uh, towards later end of the year or early next year. But as of now, it's free. Charging for on the uh, grid. Okay, sir. That is the end of the questions. No more questions has been put in the chat box and the Facebook live. So... That's it, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, for your patience and uh, answering all these questions. Thank you so, so much. So Great I would, for, yeah, for from my side and from uh, from EMC side, I would like to thank you again for uh, sparing this much time on on the common public to address their concerns and all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aether also. So we we can uh, I think uh, in the uh, down the down the way we can uh, have so many other productive sessions. Uh, to address the uh, common people's perspective on two-wheeler EV. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much for having me. It was just great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.